It was a day like any other day. Danny ambled his tired body through his doorway and was met with the regular drizzle of grey. He'd skipped the morning Facebook browse to take a walk in the rain to absorb some reality and remember his name. For he was feeling uncertain. Pulled apart by future plans like the morning curtain, a graduate with clammy hands and an ego that was hurting. He was flirting with the idea of getting far away from here while setting plans for masters and choosing a career. Confused and in fear, educated but unprepared, intelligent but skint and scared. He needed to clear his mind, find some clarity, maybe buy the eye and browse the shops of charity. After all, he was in Fallowfield, home of the hobo chic. What takeaways are frequented each day of the week in New Zealand once in gas you can find what you see Commons Park as the palace and the tower of its peak He'd trod this ancient path a hundred times Could tell you a toy tale for each stale road sign but today something was strange Didn't quite seem the same, like the setting was fixed but the scene had changed like The place was still living but the pulse had been drained, it was... it was dead at the OP gates, no students stood around to congregate. At the bus stop, no body stood to wait. The traffic was travelling in just one way. No lights from the shops or music from cafes. Like the clocks had just stopped and the stock stood in vain. He was, let's say, worried. Seen too many zombie films that had started this way. So onto Wilmslow Road, he hurried to the mile of the curry, hoping rush home would restore normality again. Now as he wandered past hard as well, the calm and smell of exotic spices was unrelenting. If Fallowfield had fallen, then Rush Home was resurrecting. Glitter and balloons consumed the midday skies, the streets beat and brim with a kaleidoscope of life, and in the curry houses, the meat was still spinning, but it smelled even better, and the shisha pads were sweeter than they had been ever in the job centre. Well, that lay dormant, but gelato passion was heaving, that the people didn't need money, just treats to believe in, ice creams being eaten by charming girls in colourful saris, with smiles that could halt divisions in parliaments The boys and the barbers had stopped having arguments And the streets were chock a block like an unannounced carnival This is like Eid or Diwali How ignorant I am to be a knowing of this party Danny pondered as he wandered through Kids in whores with candy floss as sores Bangra pumping out of car doors Jesus Christ, Danny thought I just wanted a paper I've stumbled onto an abstract jagged jigsaw City painting in which the difference of a hundred yards is bewilderingly blatant He pulled out his phone with a flick of a wrist And with a tapping of thumbs he searched for news that he'd missed Facebook, BBC, Twitter wouldn't load So he cut through the mist of madness onwards onto Oxford Road Now the wind whipped down clouds onto the canopies of whip with trees and Danny darted tentatively past the cycle pass. Up ahead, traffic lights flashed simultaneously, a fever of red, amber and green like the DVLA were having some lucid disco dream and Danny didn't hear it at first for the wind was far too strong but through the air came the pounding drums of some nameless jungle song. Danny picked up his pace and plodded along, quizzing the date asking what could be going on, found himself in a crowd of about 2,000 strong right outside a uni place. Where a ten foot sub buffer stood booming a bass contorting Danny's skeleton into all sorts of shapes. Is it Pangea? In the day? Have the Tories come to stay? I mean, Manchester's always been best for a protesting array. Why else will paupers and professors be rooted in the rain? This is insane. And Danny caught the eye of a homeless guy who'd always tried to give change. Jeans sagging, matted hair with an outstretched arm, begging someone to care. A look of unluck and muted despair. And he turned to Danny. With a spiceless and sober mind, smiled and whispered, It's been called off. You what? It's been called off. The world, it's just stopped like I've got burners. Watch, there's a sound system in the church and the vicar's getting fucked. Just go to the office blocks by Deansgate Locks, it's popping off. The internet's been slain, no mainframe for trade. The press haven't published, there's nothing to say. Politics put on pause for just one day. And I swore I saw Theresa May with a geezer doing a key, a K and A. There's no monetary value in anything. So tonight I finally got a place to stay. Isn't that great? <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. Now, Danny didn't believe it until he started to see it. A sea of people, nonchalant and happy, swaying in the once congested route of your magic bus commute. Students propped up by the library's books have stopped stuttering and stammering, taking smoking locals by cold hands, doing a lindy hop, skip and dance. Improper imposters of properties once prosperous, rock stars don in pyjamas to cost cutters, lost in the neverland of education, shared in jubilation with the victims of their gentrification. Under the arches by the railway station, there was a nana pumping ragga reggae rolled out of each 
each passing carriage of some scally scale the palace like King Kong on acid. Danny was Dorothy and Alice, plus a couple of Garys. Used two step with men in suits, skinhead skins up with clean cut darlings wearing makeup, billing suits, and down by the canal, pensioners played bridge on barges laced with the wrinkly smiles of a hundred faces. And in towns, banks were transformed into side trans dorms. The Arndells glass shattered, no need for stores, just tents strapped down to floors and a sign that reads accommodation for all. Piccadilly had been pillaged by some silly feeling hippies who were playing a game of footy with the firm of my city. And Danny thought he saw Jack Kerouac in a bucket hat. Were he a brown in his dressing gown, so an aim in an eye cap. Morrissey and Marl were making up my temple bar, drinking champagne as the rain ruined Johnny's guitar. And you wouldn't believe it, but Danny saw David Black and Eric Cantona scantily clad singing rock and roll stars as why they're all exchanged. And that, well, that's when Danny starts to remember his name. And he looked at his hands and he looked at the sky and he looked at the stars which meant it was night and the rain was now hail but the hail felt right and Danny never believed in energy or vibes or any of that mystic shite but the hail seemed to soak his pale being deep down the sediments of our elements into the net molten rock of our ancestors and they want to fuck shit up and not worry not worry what stooge will take a pedestal to run a nation of fools with no stocks to sell, no homes to buy, no papers to read, no essays to write, no only way is made in fucking Geordie Shore, just a moon and the shores and the question of why. And why does it matter? Why does any of this matter when you and I, and you and I, and you and I don't mean a thing? You could plot your life's timeline using the longest vine in the Amazon and in the blink of an eye you could still be gone. And these structures in which we've mustered and managed to master are a few natural disasters away from collapse and it seems we are the ones in the rabbit hole looking back at Danny dancing. Now Danny... Lost track of time right after he lost the plot. Came to sipping fortified wine in some Ancoats parking lot. The cranes above the maddened city's maze were ablaze. Regeneration became degeneration, and as Dally Dilly Dally through the city's alleys, jaws hit floors, and the music applauded the rave as he braved the five mile walk back through the city. Buildings were aflame. Businesses. Home scorched, it was a little darker than anyone first thought. It was a hippie come happy hardcore utopian town, but what goes up must come down. And Ying must Yang, and Jekyll must hide. And our lives must have balance, no matter how it burns you inside.